Yo, Elliot. Got a really good question here from our buddy who, no matter what leg exercise he does, his hamstrings always end up really sore and they continue to grow stronger and thicker, but his quads just can't get any bigger or stronger. Even when he does leg extensions, he says, I don't feel it in my quads at all. What the hell's going on? How is it that he's got a, a situation where the back of his legs keep growing, but the front of his legs simply don't? Now, he's watched enough of my videos to understand that the positioning of the hips are going to influence what happens down below. In fact, everything that happens outside here, whatever problems we have in our arms or in our legs and our ankles, are influenced by what's going on in our core. Lumbo pelvic region, shoulder neck region. So that's why I always talk about structural integrity. It gets boring, but hey look, you wanna be a bodybuilder? You can't have tiny quads. He's got what's called a, po a posterior pelvic tilt, or pink panther butt. This is basically where the butt, it basically tucks under, and it looks like you've got a long back, and then your butt kind of sweeps under you. It looks like a dog with his tail tucked under. Right? So he's, he's realized through watching enough of these videos that his hamstrings are really, really, really tight and they're just yanking down on your hips. You know how your hips should, should be like this, right in the middle here? Some people have really tight hip flexors or, it, that are tied in with the quads to a degree that make them do this, right? Boom, and that was the guy with the really big butt. And then the guy, the guy on the other end of the spectrum, and I'm kind, I'm kind of like this, the one that you just described. So my hamstrings are usually very weak. I have to, I've got to do extra isolation work on my hamstrings. But the other guy looks like this, boom. And that's because the hamstrings, you can imagine, are on the back here. The hamstrings pull the butt under. And he's got a really severe case of this going on. He says that he's been riding his bike for many years. I think he was like, uh, he was competing in bike riding and shit. And he, he recognized that the type of posture that he was putting himself in, very curved back with the butt tucked under, sitting on that little bicycle seat, has, has forced him into this this particular type of posture. So he's got years of repetitions creating this faulty recruitment pattern that has turned into structural degradation. Those hamstrings are just yanking down on your ass. So what is he gonna do? He, he can't even isolate his quads with, because I would tell you, you know, I have no problem with isolation exercises if you've got to bring life back into a muscle that's just laying dormant. Right? It's called uh, motor sensory amnesia. We've got some muscles that literally have fucking amnesia. Like they're like, oh, I'm here. I'm allowed to work. I can do something. So we've got to stimulate those muscles back into, into life to get rid of that motor sensory amnesia. But I'm going to use another big term here. And this is, this is the one that you're dealing with. It's called synergistic dominance. Right? All these fancy fucking words. But if you, if you follow, if you break down the words, you, you figure out what's, what's being said here. Synergistic, right? Synergy, right? It's a big fucking fad word in, in, in fitness. Synergy, working together. Synergy. It's pretty corny, actually. Synergy, synergistic, working together, dominance. So there really is no synergy if you got one that's dominant, right? We don't have a symbiotic relationship if I'm taking, if I'm doing all the work and you're not helping. Right? And that's exactly what's happening it, with the synergy between your quads the muscle, and, the, and the other muscles that support anterior pelvic tilt or the, the, the extension of your lumbar spine and those that create the flattening and the tucking under your butt. And you're ex experiencing that on a gross level by having these hamstrings that are just bigger and thicker and more massive and ugly compared to your tiny little weak quads. Right? So what the fuck do you do? Well, I wish I could give you an exercise to do. I wish I could give you a prescription, but I can't. What I'm going to offer you is something that sucks because it's going to require a lifetime of paying very close attention to being aware of and making adjustments in order to, to alleviate, to deal with. And of course I sound like a psycho and I, and I sound like a broken record, but your, your body is your mind. What's happening in your body is going to affect you psycho-emotionally. And that's why correcting our bodies, strengthening our bodies, freeing our bodies from muscular tension, especially in these, uh, in these dysfunctional fashions like you're experiencing right now, are also, also require a change in character. 
who you are shows up in your body and your body dictates who you are. Okay? If you've watched enough videos of mine, you understand what I'm saying. Essentially, you, you, the, the form equals function. A lot of you, get, you, you scientists out there who don't like Elliot Hulse because he sounds like a quasi, what do you call me? Qu a quasi scientist or quack. There's some term, you know. Pseudo, pseudo scientist. Look, you love this for, for, uh, phrase, don't you? Form equals function. Well, why do you think that it stops somewhere? Why do you think it just stops with, you, with the way you bench press and the way you move? It, your form, your physical form, dictates how you perform. Form, perform, right? If, you, if the car is formed like a, like a Maserati, it's going to drive like a Maserati. If it's formed like a Mack truck, it's going to perform like a Mack truck. If you're formed like someone who has their ass tucked under them, you're going to perform like a dog who has his tail tucked under him. Do you get that? A lot of it is metaphor, but it's literal and it shows up. So fix your body to fix your life. But if you want to fix your body, you also gotta fix your life. <laughs> crazy. I wanna stop apologizing for my crazy fucking ideas. Cause they're not that crazy. So, yes, the a simple answer, the neuromuscular answer, my friend, is you've gotta stretch your hamstrings and strengthen your quads. But you've heard that already. What else is going on there? One thing for sure is that it's going to require the development of a significant portion of patience, persistence, consistency. They all sound like the same, but they're all very different things. Humility. Longevity, it's gonna require the development of a lot of, of brand new character values, virtues, ways of being, who you are. Because you're gonna to have to sit in a stretch exercise, I'm gonna show you in a moment, for a very long time, and you're gonna to have to meditate your way out of the physical dysfunction. In order to really stretch muscles, to loosen your, the, the hold, the grip that certain muscles have on the, on the skeletal system, You've got to meditate. That's the whole point of yoga, right? Yoga is not just fucking stretching. It's getting your mind to become, to put your mind in a resourceful state so that the body yields to it. It's, it truly is mind over matter. It's mind over body. How do you guys like to use that, that term, mind over matter? And all you think it means is, is, is how to beat the shit out of yourself. Ah, but also mind over matter means yielding teaching your muscular system to yield to the higher calling of your mind. So, uh, I'm not gonna demonstrate now, maybe I'll make a demonstration later, but I'm gonna describe to you the, the, the way I would invite you to begin stretching that muscle. Because the only way you're gonna get your quads to reactivate is by shutting down the, 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 the tremendous neural drive that's, that's that's invading, that's invading your quads. You've got to, you've got to shut down the quads so that there's enough energy passing through to get into your quads. You don't have any, you don't have nothing for your quads. That's why you can't stimulate them. You do, you do extensions and you don't even feel it because there's no energy in there. You're probably not even using it. You're probably using other muscles because your nervous system is bypassing the quads completely. Okay, so you have to understand that in order to get the quads to start working again, you got to shut off certain muscles, shut down the hyperactivity of certain muscles. So you're gonna to have to stretch, the, which is gonna be your hamstrings, namely your upper hamstrings, because we want, your, we want you to, if you, if you focus clearly on your, your number one goal, and it's, it really is to get your hips to rotate forward a little bit, a little bit more again. That's really what it is that we want to have happen. That's the ultimate goal, because as that happens, your quads, the muscles on the front here that help it pull forward, are gonna come back to life. There's room for it to come back to life. So what I would invite you to do is to find a wall, any wall, you know, just a wall, boom. Sit on the wall, so, so in other words, sit on the floor with your back on the wall, right, right in the corner, boom. So you're sitting, you're sitting there. Now, this is where you're going to, you're going to hate yourself or you're gonna hate me and you're probably gonna give up, okay? And I'm hoping you don't, I really do. But, if it, but this is where you're going to be challenged. You're now going to put your hands next to your hips, Right, right down next to your hips. 
and you're gonna try your best to stick your ass right into the corner of the wall, right? So you got the corner of the wall, trust me, you're gonna have, your ass is gonna be way swooped out from the wall and you're gonna have like this big gap, like you could run a, somebody's fist right through it. You wanna get it so that your body lines up with the wall. You wanna get it so that you're sitting and your ass is deep into the crack of the wall, right into the corner of the wall. It's going to require that you, it's gonna require that you sit there for a very long time very long time each bout and for a very long time several months okay and what that's going to start doing is it's, it's going to allow you and you got to be very conservative about how you do this also your feet your feet need to be together and your toes need to be like this boom right if you're like this you, you, you're 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 let you're lending to other imbalances you know, like your, your IT bands might be tight and your, the external rotators of your upper, your, your femur might be tight. So we want to get everything at once. So get your feet together, boom, bring them together and sit with your ass in the corner there. That's your yoga, dude. I didn't even want to tell you what to do after that because you're going to, you're going to get all excited about it and you're going to be thinking about, well, I've got, I've got to hurry up with this one and get to step two. Don't hurry up with this one at all. Take a year. Take a full fucking year, 365 days, to get your ass into that corner. Because that's what it's going to require. And it's also going to require, because now you're going to start becoming more sensitive to what it's like to have your body in certain, in, in certain postures, in certain, uh, you're going to be able to carry yourself in certain ways that weren't accessible before. Right? Because now as those muscles loosen, you're going to feel different. You're going to be like, holy shit, I can, you, you're going to move so differently in so many different ways. You're going to feel like a different person. Because it's like, wow, I, I actually have, I can rock my hips, right? Your sex will be better. You're going, because you're going to become sensitive to it, you're also going to be be start becoming sensitive to shit that fucks you up, like riding your bike. Now, riding your bike is okay, and those of you who want to attack me because Elliot said riding bikes are bad. Look, I have nothing against riding bikes. I, I'm against you fucking yourself up and not knowing why. And riding your bike's one of those things that's, it's clearly part of the reason why you have your muscular imbalance. Might not be the only one, but it's a part of it. So, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but as awareness is transformative, as you become aware of your newfound ranges of motion, and then you go ride your bike and you realize, oh, I feel like shit again, you're probably gonna stop riding your bike. So that's it, dude. Take home message is don't expect quick results, and don't expect results on a single layer of who you are. It takes character to change your body, and your body will change your character. Done. Yo, Elliot.